Hi everyone, I am here today with my May book haul. And this is big by other people's standards, but for me quite a small book haul because overall I've only got 38 books to show you. And to break that down, I have got four physical books, which is quite a rarity for me, but they were featured in another video that I did recently with my boyfriend where I sent him in a shop to buy me some books with my money and let like kind of just see what he was gonna bring out for me. So I will link that video in the cards and also the description down below in case you haven't yet seen that. Um, I also got five Kindle books, which was very good for me to only buy five Kindle books in one month. Go me, well done. Then I requested and indeed received 29 net galley books. So that's where it all went wrong, but hopefully I can improve upon this this month, I mean, I've shown cutting down in my other areas, now I just need to start cutting down with the net galley requests. So first of all, I will just quickly show you the physical books that I got, which are the ones that Luke got me. So if you did watch the video where he bought me these books, you will already know what they are, so I won't go into too much detail on this, but the first one he got me was Vampire Academy by Rochelle Mead. And I was so happy he got me this, because this is one I've been wanting to read for so long and I'm sure I will fly through it and hope to get the rest of them soon. Then he got me A Single Stone by Meg McKinley, and this one, I can't remember what this one was about. This one was really strange, not that much, and I remember thinking, oh, that's nice and a quick read. There's not many words per page, and it's not very thick at all, so I'm sure I'll fly through this. But yeah, I can't remember what it's about, so I'll just row the back, read the back for you. Jenna is the leader of the line, a job every girl in the village dreams of. Life as a tunneler isn't easy, but it is the way it must be. Yet when one chance revelation follows another, Jenna begins to question things. As the boundaries of her world shift irrevocably, oh, if you saw the video um, where I showed you these, there was a discussion on how I'm saying that word. And I know I've just said it wrong again because that's how I've been saying it for years. So just ignore that. But yeah, Jenna must play her part. Change is coming and it cannot be contained. Then he got me Eyes Like Mine by Sheena Kamal. And I can't remember what this one's about either, actually. So it's late, the phone rings. The man on the other end says his daughter is missing. Your daughter, the baby you gave away over 15 years ago, what do you do? Deciding to search for her daughter brings troubled Nora Watts into contact with a past that she spent years trying to forget. It's an investigation that takes her on a harrowing journey of deception and violence, one that will eventually lead her to a final showdown with a figure from her own dark past. And all to save a girl she wishes had never been born. So this sounds really quite dark. To try and save a girl that you wish had never even been born, why does she care now? sure I'll find out when I read it. And the final one is one that I can actually remember quite well just because of the cover description and subject matter. So this is London Calling by James Craig and this is a murder mystery thrillery kind of book set in London and I love books set in London and I love books about murder so Luke was quite right in thinking that I would enjoy this because I'm pretty sure that unless it's written really badly I'm gonna love it. So now onto the Amazon books that I purchased. First of all, we have Springtime at Wild Acre by Lucy Daniels. And this is the third book in the Hope Meadows series, which is a new adult series that I stumbled across last year and are now really excited to pick up because this is the author of the Animal Arc series, which I adored as a child. So I want to try out this series, which is adult focused and I'm so excited. I'm pretty sure I've bought everyone so far, so if I really enjoy it, I can just sit and binge read them all in a row. Next we have China Rich Girlfriend by Kevin Kwan. And I'm not sure whether this is a sequel or whether this is just a different book altogether by the same author, but this is by the author who wrote Crazy Rich Asians, which I remember seeing loads of people raving about and I'm sure I bought and I just haven't read yet. So when I saw this for 99p, I decided to pick it up. Next we have Ghosts of the Shadow Market, book one, Son of the Dawn. And this is the first book in that novella series. And I have read it already, gave it four stars, just because I always feel like her novellas are lacking something. But yeah, it's nice to actually have read a book that is on my haul. This doesn't happen very often. So I'll also make the most of the fact that I've also read this one. And this is Ghosts of the Shadow Market, number two, Cast Long Shadows. 
And again, I enjoyed this and gave it four stars because again, I enjoyed it, but it just felt like it was missing something. These are great little things to read though if you want to do a little bit of just motivational reading and want to feel like you're making progress with your reading goal and you're also a massive fan of the Shadowhunter Chronicles because it just gets you a little bit more kind of exposure as much as anything to some of your favourite characters and just helps fill the gap a bit between the bigger chunker novels. And the final book I bought for myself in the month of May is Finding Audrey by Sophie Kinsella. If you've been on my channel a while, you'll know that I absolutely adore Sophie Kinsella. She is one of my favourite authors of all time. And I've been wanting to read this book for so long, I've just never bought it. And I kept thinking, worst case, I'll just get the Kindle version when it drops to 99p. And indeed, that's what happened. I got this for 99p. And I'm sure when I get around to reading it, I'll fly through it. And it'd be nice to read a YA book from Sophie rather than her typical sort of adult contemporary shopaholic-y kind of books. So now onto the books that I received from publishers via NetGalley. First of all, we've got A Moment of Grace by Patrick Dillon. This says, how do you learn to live in the wake of death? So one of the characters in this is diagnosed with leukemia and after several rounds of treatment and a bone marrow transplant and many ways of recovering Deline, she th dies 13 months after a diagnosis. And I think this is just about how her family deal with that loss. Next we have Copycat by Hannah Jane. And this one isn't out yet, this comes out on the 3rd of July. And this is a thriller, so I'm not going to look into it more than that. Then we have Betty Church and the Suffolk Vampire by MRC Kassazian. And this is coming out on the 12th of July, and this is a historical fiction. Set in September of 1939, and... Okay, so there's a bunch of murders that have dis two distinctive puncture wounds in the throat, so they assume vampires. Next we have Three Little Lies by Laura Marshall, and this is a thriller, so I'm not going to look into it beyond that. Then we have The Lost Sister by Tracy Buchanan. This comes out on the 20th of July. This has got two different time periods. This has got summer 1991 and also now. Next we have Toxic by Nikki Cloak. And this comes out on the 26th of July. This is about a girl who tags along on a boy's holiday and things happen. Then we have I Never Light by Jodie Sabrol. And this comes out on the 11th of June. And that's a psychological thriller, so say no more about that. Then we have The Island by M.A. Bennett. And this comes out on the 9th of August 2018. And this is the same author as the one that wrote Stags. Um, which is a book that I was really highly anticipating and I can't remember whether I bought it in the end or not But loads of people started giving it quite poor reviews, so I've not yet got around to reading it But all the same, there's something about this author's Plots at the very least and covers that makes me want to pick them up So again, I've got a hold of this and hopefully I'll end up enjoying it Next we have The Sapphire Widow by Dinah Jeffries this is an author that I have spoke about quite a few times on my channel. I really, really enjoyed her previous book, The Tea Planter's Wife. I've been sort of acquiring her books ever since, and this is her most recent release. This is a historical fiction set in Ceylon in 1935. I always enjoy the fact that her books are so set in various really different places to anywhere that I would normally read about. Next we have Spinning Silver by Naomi Novik, which comes out on the 12th of July. Naomi Novik is the author of Uprooted, which I've been wanting to read for so long but haven't yet got to. Most people have given it sparkling reviews, so I really want to read it. But I've also now managed to get Spinning Silver by her. And I'm hoping that I'll enjoy this one and it definitely looks really interesting. I mean, that cover alone is stunning. But the description also really has me hooked, basically. So it says, Will dark magic claim their home? And it's basically about a family who live in a really poor village. And there's rumours that she can turn silver into gold, which attacks, which attracts the fairy king of winter himself. So there's a story of, like, sacrifice and power and love. And... This looks like it's going to be really interesting. It's really caught my attention. Next we have Ace of Shades by Amanda Foody. And this came out on the 17th of May. I mainly requested this because so many people have been talking about it. I kind of wanted to see what the hype was about. So this is a YA novel and it says, 
Take a card, the price is your soul. Welcome to the city of sin where secrets hide in every shadow. Then we have The Death of Mrs. Westaway by Ruth Ware. This is the same author that wrote Woman in Cabin 10. And I'm really up for just popular authors that do psychological thrillers. So I am excited to get to this one even though I've not read the author's previous work yet. But yeah, psychological thrillers. I just acquire them. Then we have Wayland's Revenge by Leslie Lodge. This, uh, this is marketed as a historical fiction, but also thriller with it. And I am just spooked out by that cover. It's just creepy looking. And this is set in 1647, a time of bitter civil wars in England. And I can't wait to see how this sort of coincides with the whole thriller aspect of it. And I hope that it's not as dry as the last one I read in a similar time period. Then we have All These Beautiful Strangers by Elizabeth Clefoth and this comes out on the 12th of July. This is a YA thriller. Next we have The Puppet Show by M.W. Craven which comes out on the 7th of June and this is another thriller and it looks a bit horror-y and it just looks totally my cup of tea. Next we have The Anniversary by Hilary Boyd and this comes out on the 20th of September. And this is a deeply emotional novel, supposedly. So maybe this will be a bit of a tearjerker. I'm up for a bit of tearjerking. Then we have The Date by Louise Jensen. This comes out on the 21st of June. And this is another thriller, so I'm saying no more about it either. And then another thriller here with this is This I Would Kill For by Anne Buist. I recently read a book by this author that was co-written with her husband, which was Two Steps Forward. And I loved that five stars all the way. So now I'm on a desperate mission to read anything and everything by both authors. <laughs> Next we have Between the Lies by Michelle Adams. This comes out on the 12th of July. And this is another thriller. And another thriller here we have Your Closest Friend by Karen Perry. Karen Perry is a pen name of two authors combined. And I read one previous book by them called... I can't remember, I only mentioned it in a previous video as well. Anyway, I've read a previous book by them and really enjoyed it, so I've been keeping my eye open for similar ones since. Then we have The Silence of the Girls by Pat Barker. This comes out on the 30th of August. This is the author of the Regeneration Trilogy, which I was encouraged to read at school, which was a historical fiction novel around set around the World War era. And so I wanted to pick up something else by this author. Next we have Giant Days by Non Pratt and this comes on the 21st of August and Non Pratt is an author that was getting a lot of kind of hype when I was first thinking about starting booktube and so when I saw another book by this author I was like oh yes must get that and this is basically uh, a book sort of set around the idea of lumberjanes I believe. Then we have Rules of Rough by Heidi Lang, which I'm not going to lie, I requested for the cover alone because A, it's got a pug on it, and I really, really do love pugs. Pug love. But also, it's a children's, like, middle grade book, and I like to read those every now and again. They help me fly through reading and make me feel accomplished. So this is about 12-year-old Jessie, and she's in for a long summer at her aunt and uncle's house. Her cousin Anne has a snotty best friend which leaves Jessie all alone, but Jessie is industrious and not content with being ignored all summer. So she convinces Wes, a grouchy neighbourhood dog walker, to take her on as his apprentice. Imagine just spending your summer holidays walking dogs. It's that or reading, isn't it? There's nothing else you'd want to do. Then we have Differently Normal by Tammy Robinson and this comes out on the 7th of June. And this is a spellbinding young love story of hopes, dreams and sacrifice. And looks like a bit of a tearjerker to be honest. Then we have The Psychology of Time Travel by Kate Mascarenhas. And this comes out on the 9th of August. And this is a time travel murder mystery. I love the thought of that alone. I don't even need to say anything after that. Then we have The Sea Witch by Sarah Henning, and this comes out on the 31st of July. And this is a sort of reimagining of The Little Mermaid, and I used to adore The Little Mermaid, so I'm thinking that this might be just up my street. Then we have Watching You by Lisa Jewell. 
Lisa Jewell writes psychological thrillers, so that's the reason why I picked this up. Then we have Believe Me by J.P. Delaney, and this is another psychological thriller, and I'm sure I've picked up something by this author before, or else I've requested and still not read something by this author before, but the author name rings a bell for some reason. And finally, we have Open Your Eyes by Pora, Pora, Paula Daly, which comes out the 26th of July. And guess what? Another psychological thriller. So, as ever, I've picked up a lot of psychological thrillers here, so sorry that I couldn't tell you more about them, but I read very limited amounts about them before requesting them, and then I don't read about them ever again until I pick them up because I don't want to spoil myself. And you shouldn't try and spoil yourself either because thrillers are best gone into knowing absolutely nothing. So thank you so much for watching this video. Please let me know what you have bought recently, whether you are anticipating reading any of these, whether you've requested any of these and are waiting to hear back. Just drop me a comment down below. But thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe by clicking the image of me if you want to see more book reviews and other bookish content from me. And I will see you soon. Bye-bye.